Okay, thanks for having me. Thanks for the introduction. Let's get started. We don't have a whole lot of time to cover a lot of uh, ground. Today we're going to talk about analyzing and strategizing in today's hot commodities. The title of this class was determined uh, before the commodity meltdown, so hot probably isn't the right word. But if you have any questions or comments, or if there's anything I could do for you, this is my contact information. Uh, you can reach me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube. If you're on social media, you can also send me an email at cgarnerdecarlytrading.com. If you go to our website, decarlytrading.com, you'll find a lot of educational material that's free. We are a brokerage service. We make our living through commission. We offer everything from full service to discount online. We'd love to have you. That said, we give out a lot of information for free because we hope that the more information people have to help themselves in the markets, the, the better off they'll be. Of course, this has been a really challenging year. By the way, this is my dog, Frankie. I, I think I mentioned, but maybe not. We're here in Las Vegas, Nevada. And one more quick thing. I... Do a lot of things around here. I write a column for Stocks and Commodities Magazine. I also write in-house newsletters for our brokerage clients that include market commentary, speculative projections, things like that. Sometimes I'm really, really wrong. <laughs> Sometimes I'm right. This year has been pretty interesting. I'll just say that. If you're if you're interested in learning in more about the commodity markets and trading and speculating in commodities. These are the, the three newest books that I've written. They're available on any major book outlet. They're cheapest on Amazon. And without further ado, let's get started. Want to make sure everybody understands that there's a substantial risk of loss in trading futures and options. It's not suitable for everybody. It's not suitable for most people. So we're going to talk about options and option spreads and things like that. But first, I want to go to a couple of websites and just kind of take a peek at some of the things that we're seeing in the commodity markets today. Okay, so you should see a commodity heat map. Heat map. I'm sorry it took me so long to get there. So all year, uh, well, I shouldn't say all year. Let's start with coming into the year, December, January. What was everybody saying? They were saying cash is trash. You can't have your money in cash. You need to have it in something. And the reason being, interest rates were low. We thought at the time inflation was high, but what we didn't know then was inflation was going to get much, much, much higher. So the idea was cash is trash. Put your money in something. Well, this is a heat map over the last three months. Literally, cash is the only thing that's worked <laughs> in, since then, since basically Russia invaded Ukraine or maybe a little before. Cash is the only thing that saved a few people in one up cash, maybe even the Russian ruble, which is extremely ironic, but that has a lot to do with sanctions and all the riffraff that's going on in the energy markets. Um, so I'm not going to voice my opinion on any of that, just letting you know this is the reality. So even though we've been hearing all this talk about put your money in commodities because inflation is high, guess what? Commodities haven't fared so well. Again, this is a three month heat map. We can see that if we scroll down here, it might be surprising for some of you to see what's at the bottom of the pile. Now, Bitcoin and Ether, okay, I'm not, that's probably not that shocking, but some people might be surprised to see copper down 32%. And most of that's happened just in the last couple of weeks. Cotton down 31%. I don't know if anyone here trades cotton, but we were literally soaring higher day after day after day. Nothing could stop it until about three weeks ago. And then suddenly uh, it just fell out of bed. And we've seen commodities doing that a lot. The wheat market peaked out around $13 at the time. The world was convinced that we were running out of wheat. Everybody was going to starve. There's this big problem. And just as the fundamental story was the loudest and most convincing and overwhelming, the market rolled over and we've done nothing but fall since. You have to be really careful with commodities. Sometimes when things feel the most bullish is actually um, the time when you should be worried about something going wrong. Because when all the good news is out, things can go wrong. I'm going to show you a couple charts here. These are charts that I emailed to some of our, well, to all of our clients in our newsletters. Uh, this was actually emailed a couple of weeks ago. It doesn't have a date on here, but we wanted to make sure our clients understood the way commodity markets work. It's really easy to get caught up in all the hype and all the excitement when commodities are moving. But the reality is most of the time commodities trade sideways and bear markets are not only possible, they're probable. Unlike stocks that go up all the time, stocks go up all the time because of uh, dividends, because of share buybacks, and just because the economy is always growing. But in commodities, it's not like that. There's no dividends. There's, you can't buy back shares. Commodities are, most of them anyway, are renewable every year. 
or every couple of years in the case of coffee. So it's just a different animal. And the thing is, we get better every year that goes by, we get better and better and better at producing commodities. There's better technology, we're more efficient. So commodities will go up and they'll go up in a fantastic and stunning manner, but they generally don't hold rallies. Rallies and commodities are unsustainable. Oops, I didn't mean to scroll. So this is the Goldman Sachs Commodity Index. And we all hear about the inflation of the 70s, the wild commodity rallies of the 70s. Well, you can see on this particular chart where we were in the 70s and the market or the commodity index peaked out here. And it literally took a quarter of a decade to make any further upside progress. So it's just unreasonable for us to assume that at these kinds of levels, commodities are just going to keep going up forever. And it's unfortunate because a lot of people, especially a lot of people that haven't lived through this, they tend to put their money in ETFs or funds that are holding long commodities. And they don't understand that uh, what goes up goes down even harder and faster. And sometimes it does it well before the fundamentals change. In 2007, when oil peaked and commodities peaked, everybody on the planet was convinced that we were running out of oil. My mother purchased a Prius literally two weeks before oil topped out because she told me gas prices will never go down again. She bought a Prius and they rolled over immediately. You know, I'm not saying that... Uh, well, maybe I am saying my mother's a contrarian indicator. So if she starts putting on solar panels and things like that, I'll let you guys know. The bottom line is commodities go up. They don't, it doesn't last. Unfortunately, commodity rallies are always temporary. As you can imagine, this is very challenging for anybody trying to invest in because it's not passive like stocks. You can't just put your money in and know that you get paid to wait. You get paid dividends to wait. And commodities, you, that just doesn't happen. What we kind of in encourage our clients to do, depending on account size and risk tolerance and that sort of thing, and number one, we make sure that they understand this is speculation, it's risky. But from there, we try to encourage them to consider trading options. Now, options isn't for everybody and it's not perfect, but I'm going to give you a couple reasons as to why we like the idea of option trading. Now, we only have 30 minutes to talk about this and there's a lot. So I'm gonna go really quickly through these slides. If you want a copy of these, email me and I'll send them out to you. But the idea of trading options as opposed to buying futures outright is they're flexible. You're generally gonna have less volatility. There's more room for error. There's lower margin and lower risk usually, but not always, it depends on your strategy and it depends on market conditions. Sometimes when markets go haywire, like we've seen a few times this year, options get really messy. The the bid ask spreads blow out, the liquidity dries up. So those that are trading with limited capital sometimes get squeezed out of positions uh, in an unpleasant manner. So they're not perfect. Anybody trading full-size futures knows that um, buying or selling a futures contract and placing a stop order isn't perfect either. The odds of you getting stopped out are pretty good. And if you have a really, really deep stop, you might still get, get stopped out on some sort of crazy flash crash, and then it goes back up. I mean, just ask natural gas traders how that's worked out for them this year. So unfortunately, in commodities, there's no easy way. You might be asking yourself, so why even bother? Well, People are attracted to commodities because it's it's difficult and it's challenging and there's a lot of risk. But if you do the right things and luck's on your side and you're not in the wrong place at the wrong time at any particular moment, there's money to be made. The markets are moving, they're volatile, and this is supposedly the heyday of commodities. Trading is 99% mental. I fully believe this. The only way to give yourself a chance to survive is to stay calm in bad times and humble in good times. And it's really, really difficult to do. But you can do this by, number one, overfunding your account. If you're only using a small amount of margin in your account, you're going to be less likely to stress yourself out and make bad decisions. But you're also giving yourself more room for error. And that's really important because none of us are going to pick the highs or the lows. And even if we're going with the trend, there could be a correction in between that really um, messes with our heads. So options are building blocks. They're a combination of long and short. Well, OK, I should take a step back here. Again, I told you we're going to go pretty quickly. There's two types of options, calls and puts. I'm not going to define them and go into details because hopefully you know that, that what they are. If not, again, email me and I'll send you some links to our videos or and you can get the backstory or 
my books explain this in a lot more detail than we're going to cover today. If you think of options as building blocks, not just buying calls or buying puts, but think of them as a way to put together a strategy that meets your risk criteria, your reward criteria, your comfort level, you can actually use options as building blocks. That might be buying a call option and selling two call options. It might be buying a call and selling one call and then selling a put. But the idea is when you're building option spreads, you can have antagonistic legs of the spread that work as hedges. And depending on the strategy you're using, you can actually adva take advantage or benefit from time value erosion as opposed to get hurt by it. Now, with that said, I'm going to show you a couple strategies that we've recommended to our clients just recently, one today in crude oil that's rather aggressive. The strategy itself is intended to take advantage of premium erosion if the market trades sideways. But the problem with a strategy like this is if it doesn't go the way we want it to go and it doesn't trade sideways and it we're completely just dead wrong it can get pretty hairy and you can get into a lot lot of trouble so i'm getting a little ahead of myself but just want you to understand when you trade options if you're doing option spreads they can have limited risk they can have unlimited risk they can be premium collection ventures they can be debit spreads looking for a particular direction so you're in charge you pick what you think the market's going to do and how you want to play it. If you're unfamiliar with Delta, this is really important. I'm going to just run on this real quick. Delta is the rate of change in an option or option spread versus the rate of change in the underlying futures. What this means is if the Delta of your option or option spread is 30% and the futures market moves one point, your option spread will move a third of a point. If your delta is 50%, your option spread will move a half a point for every point the futures market moves. You as a trader can control your delta as time goes on. You can buy or sell futures against your options. You can get more or less short by buying or selling options. You can control this. You can't control what the market does, but you can control how you react to it. I know I'm going fast, but but again, all this information's in my books. If you're if you're interested in really getting into the nitty gritty, I just want to make sure we have a chance to go over a couple of trading strategies, not recommendations. I'm just for educational purposes want to give you some ideas. Managing your delta is a good way to manage risk. It's again, it's not perfect, especially in markets that are as messy as what we're seeing. We've had some experiences where we help clients hedge their risk in one particular direction, and then next thing we know, our hedges are the part of the trade that's really taken a lot of heat because things have flipped the other way. So in this kind of volatility, unfortunately, it's just a, it's challenging. Um, and as difficult as it is to be dealing with commodity strategies in this environment, I, the same thing can be said of anybody that's invested in stocks or even bonds. So I mean, like I said on a little earlier, nothing has really worked well other than simply being long cash. And unfortunately, very few people were long enough cash. Another thing to keep in mind with options, if you're not going to spread and you're going to buy options, be a long option only trader, you're going to have limited risk, but options tend to be expensive and options lose value. Most options expire worthless. So you want to make sure if you are buying options, you do it in a sensible way. We have a couple ideas to give you as far as when to do that. You want to make sure you're paying attention to volatility, make sure the options aren't overpriced. And if they are overpriced, maybe do something a little different, maybe a debit spread where you buy a call, sell a call. That way you still have limited risk, but you're not paying a ridiculous amount of money for an option that may or may not pan out. So in our eyes, it's generally better to be a net seller in options. But again, this has been a really rocky year for that sort of thing. But it's been a rocky year even for people buying options. Imagine if you bought a $30 crude oil call two weeks ago when oil was above 120. You know, that that option probably went from three or four thousand to zero in a matter of a couple of days. Maybe not zero, but let's say it lost most of its value. Nothing is perfect. Volatility really does matter. Volatility tells us how cheap or expensive options are. If you go to the CME Group's website, cmegroup.com, you'll find uh, an implied volatility chart for all commodities. They call it the CVOL. And this is one as an example in crude oil. This is actually not necessarily current. It's a couple, it's a month or so behind, but it gives you an idea. You can see that there's various volatility spikes. And the interesting thing is markets tend to reverse course on spikes in volatility. So keep that in mind. So when things are the messiest is usually when things are turning around. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at some, some markets here. I'm gonna um, show you a trade that we put out today. And again, I'm not recommending that you participate in this trade. I'm just suggest saying that this is one way to consider playing whatever commodity it is that you want to play in a bullish manner. 
All right, so hopefully you can see the screen. This is uh, the newsletter that we send to our clients. It's the, the DiCarli Perspective. And this is typically the format you'll see, uh, trading idea with details, risk and reward at the bottom. So the first idea that we had to pl play cr crude, and keep in mind, like if we think a particular market might be making a move or we think we have an idea where it might go next, generally, again, we don't have a crystal ball. We could be dead wrong. So. We, we give clients a couple of ways to play it based on their risk tolerance and based on their conviction of the trade. They may think we're crazy and not want to do anything. That's fine. But depending on what their circumstances are, we give them at least, we try to give them at least two ideas to play it, sometimes three if we think that there's that many uh, alternatives. So the first idea that we were offering is pretty aggressive. It, it takes a trader that has quite a bit of conviction in oil market finding some sort of a low. And it also takes a trader that has plenty of margin. The margin on this particular trade is about five to 6,000. When you're dealing with options, option margin can change very quickly. It can go up, it can go down pretty dramatically along with market volatility. So that it's not like it's set in stone. If we're wrong and oil collapses under $90 towards our 77 put, the margin can go up quite a bit. In fact, it can be at if things get ugly enough, it could be as high as the futures margin, which is closer to 10,000. So just keep that in mind. But this is how the trade would work. On second thought, I'm actually going to take you to uh, my trading platform. I think it'll be easier for you to see. Because before I show you that trade, I want to point out this. And hopefully you can see this. This is a monthly chart of crude oil. And the interesting thing that we saw is, to be honest, in the in the overall scheme of things, in the really big picture, I think crude oil's probably seen the highs, and I think we overall move lower. However, there is a really good chance that we bounce pretty sharply from here, and maybe I'm wrong, and we actually continue to rally and go much higher than the prices we saw earlier this year. I don't think that's going to be the case, but it is possible. But in any case, there's a pretty good chance that crude oil finds support right around today's low, which was about 90. And and the reason I say that is this trend line was in existence prior to the war breaking out. This is when the war broke out and crude oil rallied from 90 up to 130-ish. And we've basically given back all of that war premium, all the premium that was built in because of the sanctions. So it's almost like all of that never happened, which is interesting, correct? The thing is, we're that line that was previously resistance is now acting as support. So it's got technical support. Further, we are in a situation where the war is still ongoing. The sanctions are still on. So maybe it doesn't make sense to erase all of that war premium. Now, I know that there's recession concerns and those sort of things. And I do acknowledge people are probably going to start traveling less because it's just a nightmare to fly if you've, if you've done any of that lately. Even so, in the very short run, there's a pretty good chance we hold 90 and maybe bounce 10 to $15, that's not impossible, maybe even $20. It's that volatile of a market. We also noticed that we have a very similar pattern in 2008, as the market was topping in, this says 2007, but it should be 2008, sorry. Uh, 2008, we saw crude oil peak at around 147, right around when my mother bought her Prius. And then it sold off sharply and it actually hit a very similar trend line to what we've got going on here. See how we've got an uptrend line that keeps holding and then it breaks through. We had something similar going on in the early 2000s. We had an uptrend line that broke through and then it found its high and we came back down and it's kind of hard to see this. Hopefully you can tell, but right around where it comes back down and match and hits this previous resistance line, which is now support, it actually held that. And for about a month, it bounced from 112 up to 130. So that's a $13 bounce. That's pretty substantial. From there, it just completely collapsed all the way to 33. So this is should be a pretty good reminder to you of just how risky commodities can be to the downside. It's, there, it's not a place to be complacent. It's not a place to just be long and forget about it, set it and forget it. Don't do that in commodities. You can get away with that in stock and bonds, but not commodities. So this is why we think oil might have a good bounce. With all of that, now we're zoomed into a daily chart. The other chart was a monthly chart. And we can see that we're also sitting on support right around the $90 area. It's not a coincidence. You'll notice charts of different time frames. Generally, support and resistance lines kind of match up. 
So the idea of this particular option spread is we want to be long oil and we want to buy the 90 call. But to buy that 90 call, it would cost the trader about $7,600. That is a lot of money. So to pay for that call option, the trader might sell a $100 call and sell a 77 put. So the idea is the volatility is high. We're collecting a lot of premium to help pay for the specul speculation. Once they sell the 100 call and the 77 put, the total cost of the trade is only $400. So the nice thing is you're only spending $400 to get into this trade. If oil, if you hold all the way to expiration and oil is somewhere above 77, but below 90, you only lose $400 plus transaction costs. Not so bad. The opportunity cost of a cheap trade like this, remember nothing in life is free. The opportunity cost is if we are just flat out dead wrong and crude oil does not bounce from here and it just melts down, we have unlimited risk under 77. And the worst part is paper losses start mounting before, well before we get to 77. So let's say that we break below 90, let's say we go below 85 and just keep melting down. This 77 put that we sold for $3,200 or $3,300, whatever our fill was, it'll become expensive very quickly and we'll have a big paper loss on our hands. The best way to handle that situation is usually to sell mini futures or micro futures against it to get your delta under control so that you have a hedge and we, you can see what's going on and how it's gonna work. In theory, in a perfect world, if you sold enough futures to cover your 77 put, so it would be one big future, two minis or 10 micros, by the time you get to 77, you actually have no downside risk. You cover your risk penny for penny. And so in that case, if oil went to zero, you would still only lose $400. But that's a very simplified example. It's usually not that easy. It gets really hairy markets, as you can see in oil, these look like small gyrations. Those are really, really big moves. Those are $20 moves in oil. That's $20,000 per contract. So this stuff can get messy. In a more normal environment, you see back here in August, September, October, the market would go up or down 50 cents to a dollar, maybe $2 a day. A $3 day seemed big. In today's environment, we're seeing crude oil go up or down $2 to $8, 9 to $10. So it's just, it's just that volatile. But for those that are looking to play the upside, that's one way to do it. A more conservative way to do it would be to, to put on a butterfly. We're already kind of running out of, out of time here. So I want to just jump through this real quick. Uh, with a butterfly, you have limited risk. You could buy the October 93, sell the 103 calls, sell two of them, and then buy a 113 call. And it's basically a range trade. So from 93 to 103, the trade makes something. The most you could lose is 1500 The most you could make is 8500 So the odds of making money on that trade are less, but you can also rest easy at night knowing no matter what happens, you can only lose $1,500. A very small and clean way to play this would just simply be to go along a micro futures contract. The micro futures is one-tenth the size of a regular contract, so the margin's only about $1,000, and you make or lose $100 for every dollar crude oil moves up or down. And these are the specs on that trade that I showed you before, the aggressive option trade. Uh, that's 63 days to expiration, margin's 5,500, unlimited risk below 77. So that gives you an idea of, of what we're looking at. Wow, I, I talked about the risk, but I forgot the reward. If you held that trade, the buy the October 90, sell the October 100, sell the 77 put. If you held that trade all the way to expiration, and I'm not saying you would, most people don't and shouldn't, but if you did, you would, and oil was above $100 a barrel, you'd make $9,600. So your $400 cash outlay and your 550, I'm sorry, 5,500 margin could possibly turn into 9,600 profit. Of course, you have unlimited risks, so that's the downside of it. Okay, I'm gonna show you one other trade really quickly. We don't have a ton of time, unfortunately. Okay, so you should see uh, the similar newsletter, but this time it's a Euro trade. This is a, a far less aggressive position. It's highly directional. We're not looking to take advantage of premium erosion or anything like that. We think the Euro has a chance at bottoming, a, 
better than 50-50 chance, probably a 70 to 80% chance of bottoming. I know that nobody else thinks that. But again, nobody thought crude oil was going to roll over when it was at $130 a barrel or even two weeks ago when it was $120. Things can happen and they happen before the fundamentals change. So one way to play this is to just buy cheap options using the December options. The December options have a lot of time left on them. So you have tons of time, meaning you're not going to see a lot of premium erosion in the option unless the market just simply goes the other way. But you can, this is an idea of buying cheap 110 call or somewhere in the vicinity. Your total risk is less than $500. Gives you 150 days in the market. Something like this has unlimited profit potential. And I've seen the Euro do some crazy things. I've seen the Euro rally 400 points in a day. That's probably not going to happen here. But if you can double or triple your money on this option, I think that'd be a good play. And I think there's a pretty decent chance it happens. If not, you're out four or 500 bucks. So that's one way or one scenario where buying options outright instead of spreading maybe makes a lot of sense. The options are cheap because nobody thinks it's going to happen. We're at a 20 year low. Volatility is on the puts, in the puts, not the calls. So might be worth a shot. Okay, we're short on time, so I'm going to uh, just jump back to the slides real quick here. We've learned a lot of things this year, one of them being overreacting or overhedging can be catastrophic. So being too diligent in hedging your risks can, can be just as bad as not being diligent enough. So there's a fine line. Unfortunately, we just it's hard to know where that line is until after you've crossed it. But, you know, hedge yourself, but don't get too carried away. And real quickly, um, trading is a mental game. Options are building blocks. You have to be in it to win it. So sitting on the sidelines forever isn't, isn't the right answer either, but being on the sidelines is a position. There's a there's kind of a, a fine gray line there. If you want to learn more about trading options, some of the strategies that we talked about today, visit tradingcommodityoptions.com. If you want to learn more about uh, our brokerage services, we'd love to see you at decarlytrading.com. We hope that you've picked up something out of this class or at least been entertaining. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please let us know. This is my contact information. And again, I'd love to hear from you.